blocks. If you're kind of like a Lego maniac or something, you like putting pieces together and that's how you create your documents, well, build those blocks once, repeat, and that way you are not going to have to do the same work over and over again because you have these blocks in place. You can just simply place into your document and boom, there you are. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing. Microsoft Word 2007 using graphics part one we know at some point we are gonna have to get past just plain black and white or okay I'll admit it even colored text on a screen and we need to add some eye candy something that can visually stimulate us as we read this document whether it's a report or a a book or whatever it is even a letter having a picture or photo helps to visually enhance the point that you're trying to make if you hang around me for very long, you'll quickly find out that I'm not very graphically inclined, which is why Word 2007 and the Office products really make my job a lot easier. Whether it's clip art or pictures, it's going to help me make it look nice. And then, you know, text boxes. Sometimes just letting the text lie down and just be there doesn't really work. Instead, why not make text a graphic element itself, and that way you can manipulate it, you can maneuver it. That's what text boxes allows us to do. We love word processing because it has taken what used to be just the realm of a typewriter and a letter and created almost desktop publishing with some of the things that we can do, especially in Word 2007. We'll go ahead and open up my customer response letter that I had created, and uh, Jeremy is eventually going to get this uh, letter once we've uh, edited it enough and done some cool things with uh, Word there. And so now we're going to add some, uh, maybe some drawings or uh, drawings as they like to say in England, I uh, just love the way they say that, onto our environment. Well, the first one that we wanted to do was clip art. Now, if I had my uh, letter open and the tab here is on home, you'll notice that it's got the fonts and the things, but to do anything with drawings or clip art or pictures or anything like that, you have to do the insert tab here on the ribbon, on the office ribbon. And here we can see your illustrations. And you got a lot of things, picture, clip art, shapes, smart art charts, we'll see a lot of these. Uh, we'll take a look at these two primarily from this tab. And then of course we're going to take a look at the text box. We'll take a look at some of these others. We've already seen quick parts and some of the other things that we can insert. But let's start off with the one that's been around the longest, and that is clip art. Now, if we look at our letter here, let's say I wanted to say, well, you know, down here near Chris W., Acme Musical Instruments, let's say I wanted to add a, a little piece of clip art down here. So I come down here to the Acme Musical Instruments, and I come over here and I say to myself, okay, I want to do clip art. Now, when I click on clip art, it's going to open up our clip art task pane. Now, what am I going to want to do? Well, I want to going to find uh, music type clip art. So I type in music. Now what it's going to allow you to do is you can search in selected collections. You can do all of my collections, office collections, web collections. I mean you can you know check just about anywhere that you want to go. So we'll say there. Or you can just say click you know everywhere. Look everywhere for music. Anything that has to do with music. Now the results you can have quite a be quite a few different things. If you click down here, you'll notice you got clip arts, you got photographs, you can do movie sound, just about any type of media. Well, let's think about this. Don't think I want sounds. I don't think I want movies, but I do want clip art and photographs. And if you expand it out, it'll tell you the different types of clip art you can get, the different types of formats, things that you can do. Just so you know. So we'll just say we'll stick with clip art and photographs. I'll go ahead and click go. It's going to go out and search not only my local machine, but also out on the web. And it's going to go ahead and find all clip art that matches my search uh, keyword phrase here, which is music. Okay. Well, it looks like it's gone out and found a few things, and including uh, we got in a picture of multimedia. Here's the music. Now, notice when I click on it, it tells you how big it is by default. This music one is a WMV file or WMF file, Windows Meta file. It's 263 by 262 pixels, and it's uh, it even tells you the size of the file, which is going to be added to your Word document, so that you know you get some good information. You can also see that you have the down arrow. When I click on the down arrow, it says, "Would you?" 
you want to do? Do you want to insert it, copy it, delete it from your clip organizer? Do you want to create your own collection, like a music collection? We could do that. You can edit the keywords, similar style, preview the properties, all those kind of things, just by simply clicking on the down arrow if you want. Now we can also, of course, go ahead and move up and down here and find a different, uh, here's some photographs for the clip art. You got, mar you know, Maracas there, somebody playing music, you got all kinds of stuff. Ooh, there's a cool one. It looks like a brass or brass instrument. That's the one I want to use. Also notice that you have a little like a little world globe here. That means this is off of one of the either Office Online collections or one of the other web collections that you're using. Now if I just go ahead and click on this, it automatically inserts it into my document right where I had it uh, placed. So I scroll down here and I went after the Ma Acme Musical Instruments Incorporated and you say, well, okay, Chris, uh, that's great, but uh, maybe I don't want it there exactly. Well, guess what? With any media, any visual, you're going to have the option to edit it. In fact, as soon as I selected on this and inserted it, you'll notice that, uh-huh, we have that, uh, you know, formatting tool that comes up for pictures. And so you can change things like brightness, contrast, the, you can recolor it, compress it, change it, you know, change the, the style. And of course, all you need to do is take your mouse and wand over and it will show you what it looks like when you do certain things to it. Now, in this case, we can say, well, you know, that's kind of a little big, Chris. It's, uh, you know, this huge thing. So what if I want to resize it? Glad you asked. Two ways. One, you can take your mouse and come over here and select the anchor point here in the corner. Now when I do this and I click and hold and drag, it will keep the aspect ratio. In other words, the height and width will remain the same ratio as it was when it's this big as it is when this small, so it looks the same. So if I come down here and I make it this big, you know, it looks like that. Now, of course, I can also resize it by utilizing the vertical and horizontal anchor points by clicking this, and now I can make it taller or I can make it wider, you know, things like that if I want to. Those are all things I can do. And if I don't like any of it, see up here, reset picture, it discards all the formatting changes you've made. So boom, it brings it right back to that. So I can go here and I can, you know, scroll it down, click and hold it and make it smaller so it kind of fits in uh, with where things are. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I can also move it. If I take this clip art and uh, move it, I can move it to another place on my document if I want to. So in this case, I'll leave it right here. And I can also, you know, maybe I don't want it, to, you know, going left to right. If I take my mouse, I can change and rotate the position by simply coming up to the green anchor, holding your, rolling your mouse over it, and you can see it changes to the little rotate icon. If I click and hold and then move it, look at this. It's rotating. So I can rotate any way I want and show the different way that it's placed here. So maybe I want it to be up and down. So I can do it like that. You know, rotate it that way. Or I can, you know, rotate it back, you know, and so it goes up and down that way if I want. You know, you got different ways of doing it. And then I can resize it this way if I want. So you can change the position and the look and feel of it by utilizing just some real simple clicking on the anchor points or the rotate. I'm going to go ahead and reset the picture, bring it back. And we'll go back and you know make it nice and small here, uh, right next to Acme Musical Instruments. So now I've got my clip art. Well, that's cool. So that's all my pre-built clip art. But what if I wanted to add a picture that I already have taken, a photograph or something else? Well, I can do that. For example, Jeremy here, you know, I talk about his brand new tuba. Well, let me go ahead and close my clip art uh, task pane here come back up to insert and let's say I want to insert a picture that I have of Jeremy's brand new tuba so I said hey we hope this letter finds you in possession of a brand new tuba so I'll go ahead and put my cursor there and I want to insert a picture of the tuba I'm sending makes sense right so I come up here and I click on picture now when I click on picture it's gonna go out to my documents or you can go out and check your computer or any network drives your desktop recent documents and you can find a picture now in this case, I've obviously done a little bit of advanced work, and so I went out and found a picture of a tuba here. 
You can also open up all types of pictures, you know, enhanced metafiles, JPEGs, PNGs. I mean, whatever's out there, pretty much Word can accept it as a, as a picture graphic. I usually go with just all pictures, so that way I can see um, any pictures that I have, whether it's a JPEG, a GIF, or whatever. I can choose any one of those and use it. So here's my tuba. So I go ahead and select my tuba. I come over here and I click Insert. Now notice the drop-down arrow. I can insert it. I can insert a link or I can insert and link it to this particular picture. So that way if the picture changes, if I change any, make any changes to the tuba, it will then update it. Kind of cool. But we'll just go ahead and click insert. And now there we go, we've got my tuba. But holy cow, look at that thing. That thing's right in the middle there. And I mean, all the text is going all kinds of loopy around it. I mean, this doesn't look real good. Well, relax, don't worry about it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna need to format this picture in how it wraps or how text wraps around it because right now I put it here and so it's this tall so it you know gave me space to show it and then it pushed this out and so that's what it's gonna look like if you look up here you have the, abi the, the ability to change the text wrapping and the way it wraps around the objects you can also change the position on the uh, thing. If you click down here you get the same thing with the text wrapping you can make it in line with text you can do it with the top left with square text wrapping. You can do it in the middle. You can do it over here to the side. You can't really see it there. You can do it here down below in the middle with square text in the middle of the page. And this is obviously the position on the page itself. And you can see that you know now it's in the bottom left. I can't even see it down there. Or I can even click on more layout options, which gives you the advanced layout dialog box. Now this didn't, you know, has to do with the position on the page. If you go to text wrapping itself, this is just dealing with, okay, you've placed it where you want on the page, now how do you want it to deal with the text itself? In line with text, which is primarily the default, you can do square, you can do tight, behind the text, in front of the text, you know, you, you have a lot of the choices. So when you select this and you come up here to the text, and you say, I want to do it you know, tight or behind the text or whatever you want to do. So if I say tight, watch what happens. It moves it. And now the text kind of, as I like to say, it gets in and crowds into the picture. And so it's real close. But it still doesn't look too good. And I mean, it's still not exactly what I want. So I can come back up here and say, well, maybe I want it uh, through the, the picture. So I click on it through. Well, that just kind of didn't do too much of what I wanted either. Or maybe I want it on the top and bottom. Okay, well, there's Jeremy, and then here's the text underneath. Okay, that man, looks a little bit better. Or you can even do it behind the text. Look at that. The text types right over it. Or if you want it free-floating, you can do in front of the text. Now what I can do is I can select the picture, and I can move it anywhere on the page, and it's placed over the actual text itself. So I'll go ahead and uh, you know undo the move there, and uh, undo the uh, the font uh, changes here. You know you can do all the text wrapping or whatever you want. But in in this case, if you want it tight and you want to adjust it, you can still do some of the formatting. Where I can say, look, I want to move it and change the size down just a little bit. So okay, that looks good, a little bit better, and maybe. What I want to do is right now, you know, it's placed here. Maybe I want to move it over here a little bit. See, as I move it, the text starts moving around the picture. So I can start placing it where I want. Hey, wow, this is looking a little bit better. You know, you can move it here and make sure that it's on the tuba. Or if you want, you can just move it all the way over here to the side and check this out. Now, hey, that looks really good. Now the tube is over there and you can see it and the text kind of moves around it. And if you need to move it a little closer, it adjusts automatically to where you place it. So you can move the picture and then the fonts or the, excuse me, the text is going to wrap around it. Now, obviously, I can tell you where I like to have it and I like where it looks, but uh, you might say, Chris, that looks horrible. I don't like it there. Hey, guess what? Hey, don't, don't have to do it the way I do it. Do it any way you want. You can place it around the text, behind the text, the text wrapping. And then, of course, you have the advanced layout position that you can do. So you do the layout options. And you can tell where the picture position, it's an absolute position. Do you want to move the object with the text, lock the anchors, put the layout in table cell, allow overlap. Under the text wrapping itself, you can do it on both sides, the left only, right only, the largest body of text, you know, and, and select these. So these are just many different options on when you place your text 
around your picture, when you place your picture and you want text to go around it, you're going to use the text wrapping options. So far, though, what we've shown you whenever we use text is it's pretty much typed out onto the page and that's where it has to sit and it follows the, the style and the paragraph rules. But what if you wanted to place text just about anywhere you want and, and not have to worry about uh, whether the picture wraps around it or not? That's where you can use what is known as a text box. And this is where the, uh, you know, the desktop publishing aspect really starts coming in. Take a look over here under text box. You can insert not only pre-formatted text boxes, which we saw on the